If you are a wedding photographer looking to purchase a new Apple computer in 2021 or 2022, but you're not really sure which one to buy, then you're in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you. I'm gonna make it super easy to understand. I'm gonna explain the M1 chip, these new MacBook Pros everyone's talking about, and I'll even give you my recommendation for what I think would be the best computer for a working professional to buy. Hey there, my name is Sally Harrington. Welcome back to the Caitlin James YouTube channel. On this channel, we help photographers build profitable and purposeful businesses while also giving you a little insight into behind the scenes of Caitlin's everyday life. So today we're gonna be covering the M1 chips from Apple, the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, and then giving you my recommendation as to like which Apple computer I think would be best for you as a professional photographer in 2022. If you wanna just skip around, I'm going to leave timestamps to everything down below. So feel free to click on those and just kind of click on the parts that's important or relevant to you. Um, or if you wanna just jump to the end and see my recommendation, you're more than welcome to do that. That's totally fine, no worries. Okay, so first let's talk about these M1 chips. And in order to really understand what makes the M1 chip special, you kinda of need to understand where we've come from in terms of like how computers normally work. So normally when you're buying a computer, you're looking at three main components that sort of make up the performance of the computer. You're looking at the CPU, the GPU, and the RAM. If you're not really sure what these different things are, I have an entire explainer video that I can link up here that will explain what each of those different components do, why it's important to you as a photographer, all those different things. So if you wanna know more about those, click over here. But the nice thing is that with the M1 chips, those are kind of rendered obsolete because what Apple basically has done is taken those three main components that make up a computer and they've combined it into one, one chip that works in harmony with each other and it's called the M1 chip. I also have an entire video on my channel explaining the M1 chip, why it's important, how it works, all that sort of stuff. If you want like a ton more details and information, you can watch it over here. But basically the sports center version is that um, by combining these three elements together, it allows Apple to have complete control over the entire stack. So they control the software and because they design and create the software themselves, but now they also can have all these three components made by Apple and tightly integrated on one chipset. So it allows them to do crazy things with performance and battery life that we've never seen in laptops ever before. And they're able to put in some of the computers 20 some odd hours of battery life just because of how efficient they're able to be with, again, the software and the hardware working so harmoniously together. So in that first round of M1 chips, they put it in everything. They put it in the MacBook Air, a 13 inch MacBook Pro, the iMac, um, the Mac mini, they even put it in the iPad, but it was the exact same chip in all of those, those different form factors. So the performance and those things were marginally pretty much the exact same, uh, depending on which form factor it is that you chose. And this was great, you know, and this was great for, I would say, you know, 80% of photographers out there would be totally fine with an you know, original M1 product of kind of your form factor of choice, would handle almost anything you could possibly throw at it, and you get the added benefit of the insane battery life. But of course, there's always that top 20% or so of you know pros that are gonna need more. So Apple came out with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. And more importantly, honestly, they also came out with redesigned 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros. So we'll talk about the M1 Pro and the M1 Max in just a second. I wanna talk about the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros that Apple came out with. Uh, I was an Apple user for over a decade and I switched to PC a couple years ago because I was so frustrated with the Apple computers and the laptops and the some of the choices that they were making in terms of their designs. However, <laughs> when I watched the keynote for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, I was so excited and so giddy because they literally fixed almost every single issue that I had with the old machines. First of all, the screen they have on this is amazing. The screen is obviously super important for us as photographers. We need it to be color accurate and we want to be able to rely on our screen. And they've put a liquid XDR screen in these new MacBook Pros. And basically it's just like marketing jargon for, it has a really high contrast ratio. So you can get really dark, rich blacks and very bright brights. And it's a very color accurate monitor. Um, they've also included a variable refresh rate. So the screen can actually refresh at up to 120 Hertz per second. So 120 times every second, the screen is refreshed. So what that just, just gives you is really smooth animations. But what's cool about it is that it only will ramp up to 120 frames per second when you need it. So when you're scrolling through things or you're doing things that have motion in them, the computer will ramp up to 120 frames per second. But if you're just reading text and nothing's happening on the screen, it'll ramp back down. So it's a really cool technology that is available in some of the iPad Pros and in the new iPhones, and it's now on the Mac. 
They actually built these computers to be a little bit thicker than the old ones, which is something that Apple never does. They've always been on this sort of race for like the thinnest, most sleek computers you can possibly make. So for the first time in a long time, they actually made the computers a little bit thicker, not a lot, just enough that they were able to put the max amount of battery that you can legally take on an airplane inside of the, at least the 16 inch, in, inside these machines, um, which is you know great for improved battery life. Like I mentioned, that paired with how good the M1 chip is with battery life, you get insane battery life with these computers, but it also makes it so the computers won't overheat as easily. And when I say insane battery life, you can get up to 17 hours of battery life on the 14 inch MacBook Pro and up to 21 hours on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is just insane. And the headline you've probably heard the most is that they brought back the ports. Some of them, not all of them. There still is no USB-A. I know some people <laughs> thought that they put the USB-A port back on. They didn't, it's still USB Type-C. But what they did add is they added back a full HDMI port. They also brought back MagSafe, which was one of my favorite features from laptops of old. Basically, if you aren't aware of what MagSafe is, is it makes it so that your power cable, when you plug it to your computer, it's connected via a magnet. So if you trip over the cable, instead of sending your computer flying across the room, the magnet just pops off and your you're safe, you're good to go. And for us photographers, one thing that we really appreciate is that they brought back the SD card slot reader built into the side of the computer. I cannot tell you how convenient this is to have an SD card slot reader built into your computer. And then a few miscellaneous things, they added a 1080p webcam, which is hard to believe in 2020, 2022, that we just now have 1080p webcams. Uh, but there you go, they improved the speakers, which uh, you know are supposed to sound absolutely amazing. They put faster SSDs in here, so the internal um, hard drives themselves have faster read and write speeds, like significantly faster, so that's always a welcome bonus. And that's just the physical stuff. On top of that, like I said, they also came out with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, which are basically just bigger, more beefed up versions of the original M1 chip. So all the new chips, the Pro and the Max, come with the same CPU. So it's a 10 core CPU, eight cores are high performance cores, and two high efficiency cores. So basically that's where you can get the really high battery life for things that you're doing that are just like menial tasks, emails, things like that, that kick all the power to those high efficiency cores. So they use very, very, very little power, but then they have those eight big power cores that when you're doing high performance things that you need a lot of power from your computer, it's going to kick over to those and it bounces back and forth between them simultaneously. So the CPU itself, like I said, is the same across all of them. There's no options. You don't get to choose. You get the same CPU on the M1 Pro and the M1 Max across all variations. Now, the big difference that you're gonna see is gonna be in the GPU. So on the M1 Pro, you can have a 16 core GPU. And on the M1 Max, you have the option of either a 24 core or 32 core GPU. Now again, if you don't understand what that means exactly, or you wanna know more about it, go watch my other video. It'll explain kind of what the GPU does, what cores are, all that sort of stuff. And then as far as RAM goes, uh, for the Pro, you can either have 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, and on the Max, you can do 32 or 64 gigs of RAM, and it's a little bit faster. So it'll just read and write a little bit faster. And then they all have SSDs that are um, upgradable if you wanna pay for it, all the way up to eight terabytes of storage. And one thing that's really cool that Apple has never done in the past is you can actually get the exact same chip, so whichever one you wanna choose, whether it be the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, at any spec in both of the 14 inch and 16 inch variations. In the past, you, some of the um, higher end CPUs and things like that were only reserved for the, the larger laptop. So if you're the type of person who likes a bit of a smaller form factor, but you still want like that crazy high performance, you can get any of the chips that you want in the 14 inch. And from everything I've seen online, there's no real thermal um, disadvantage to doing so unless you are doing like crazy, crazy, crazy high performance things. So like 3D rendering for long periods of time and things like that. But for photographers, you'll never really cap the thermals on any of it. So you can choose whichever form factor you want and your performance will not be affected no matter what chip you choose. Okay, <laughs> I know that was a lot. Thank you for sticking with me. Now, if you just jumped here from the intro of the video, hi, welcome. Um, no judgment here, come on in. We're gonna do the recommendations now. Um, if you've been with me the entire time, thank you. I hope that you learned something. I hope that this was an informational and educational at the same time, um, and that it wasn't too too much. I tried to make it as simple as possible. So anyway, all right, here we go. So what are my recommendations? What would I suggest that you purchase as a professional wedding photographer, portrait photographer, honestly, any type of photographer, in 2021, soon to be 2022? Here's what I would suggest. 
I would suggest the 16 inch M1 Max with 32 gigs of RAM, a 24 core CPU, and one terabyte SSD that is going to cost $3,299. Now, that's not cheap, but I think that if you are a working professional, I think that this will be a great investment that will last you four or five years easily, and you won't have any sort of performance issues. It'll kind of be like the best of both worlds, the best option that you can possibly pick. Now, you might say to yourself, Tyler, I thought you said these were all overkill and that you like, the M1 Max is like way more than you'll ever need and da da da. Yes, that's true. I don't actually think that any photographers need the M1 Max, but here's the reason why I'm suggesting this one over the Pro. If you purchase the M1 Pro 16 inch, um, it only comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, right? Now, I think personally that as a working professional photographer and the way that most people use their computers, having 32 gigabytes of RAM is a really great idea. So I almost always say that you kind of need a minimum of 32 gigs of RAM if you are a working professional photographer. If you upgrade, which you can, the RAM on the M1 Pro to the 32 gigabyte option. It costs $400. Now at this point, your machine is sitting at $3,099 with the same other, other specs. So basically for $200 more, you can bump up from the 16 cores to the 24 cores in the max uh, because the 32 gig gigs of RAM come standard with the max. So you're looking at a $200 price difference for X, so all those extra GPU cores I think that once you're at this price point, an extra 200 bucks isn't gonna make that much of a difference. And I think that you'll appreciate having those extra GPU cores, you know, three, four, five years down the line. And I think they're more than worth the $200 price difference. But let's say you have a budget of $2,500, right? You're like, ah, oh, that's 32, I only have a budget of 2,500, what should I do? I think you should wait. I think you should save up, save your pennies, do whatever you need to do to save up until you can afford this spec version of the computer. I don't think it's gonna be worth it for you to buy a lower spec one. I think you're, you're gonna regret it in the future and you're so close to the 3200. Just save up and try and get up to this so you can buy kind of what I suggested. Okay, hey guys, uh, editor Tyler here. I just wanted to add a quick point because um, I was feeling self-conscious about this one. This one point, I feel like I didn't explain it very well. So the sacrifices you'd have to make with a $2,500 budget would mean you'd have to go down to the M1 Pro, which that's not a really big deal. I think that you could easily, you know, survive. You wouldn't notice hardly any difference editing on an M1 Pro. That's not the problem. The problem is that at that $2,500 price point, you'd also have to go down to 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. And I just think that 512 gigabytes, it fills up so fast. Even if you store all your raw files externally, it'll just get full fast. And that's one of those things that you'll regret because once it starts to really fill up, with downloads and fonts and programs and whatever. It's just a nightmare to manage, especially if you're not a very um, digitally clean person, if that makes sense, tidy, maybe tidy is a better word. Um, so that would be one sacrifice you'd have to make. And then the other sacrifice you'd have to make would be, again, like I talked about 16 gigs of RAM, which you could get away with, but again, I think there's gonna be times where you're gonna have to, you have to watch it, right? So I think that those two sacrifices combined to get down to 2,500, is gonna be more than you're gonna to wanna to make as a professional photographer, right? So then once you start adding back up, you're like, oh, well, okay, then I'll just I'll just deal with that 512 SSD and I'll just bump up to the 32 gigs of RAM. Now we're basically in the same spot we were just a minute ago where you're like, all right, now you're really only, you know, $300, $400 off from like the ideal build with no sacrifices. So I think as a professional, you wanna just like bite the bullet, buy the one that you want with $2,500, just save up until you can get to what you want with no compromises. The only exception I'd make to this would be maybe if you're like more like of an amateur, not like a full professional, or if um, your computer literally like craps out on you and this is all the money you have to spend, then sure, like you'll have a great experience still with this computer. Gosh, this thing is heavy. <laughs> um, you have a great experience with this computer no matter what. I just think that as a professional, you don't wanna make sacrifices. But if you have a budget that's lower than that, lower than $2,000, let's say, $2,000 or lower, then here's what I suggest. I actually suggest that you get an M1 MacBook Air. You might be saying, what, that's crazy. No, honestly, I think the M1 MacBook Air is gonna be enough power for, like I said, 80% of you photographers out there. The screen is still great, the form factor is great, all the different things, it's super thin, super light, the battery lasts 
forever. I think that's a really good choice. You might say like, well, what about the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip? Yes, you could get that one, but it's $200 more. And the only thing you're really getting is you're getting a fan um, and you're getting a touch bar, right? Which I don't, I don't think it's worth it. So at that point, uh, I, I just think that MacBook Air is going to be a better choice. I mean, you, you could go with the Pro. Either one um, would be fine. But I would get as much RAM as you can get. So I think 16 gigs is the most RAM that you can get. Um, one terabyte SSD. And that will run you 1649 which is for the MacBook Air, which I think is a really, really good price. And if you want something even cheaper than that, they do have the M1 Mac Mini, which I think is like $800 or something like that. Um, again, same thing. Get as much RAM as you can in that one um, and get a you know it's up to you i guess how big of a ssd that you want to get um just remember with the m with the mac mini you have to bring your own monitor which is you know added expense um and a keyboard and a mouse so if you already have all those things the m1 mac mini is a really great option if you're looking for a desktop solution just remember that the m1 pro and m1 max are probably going to find their way down into the mac mini and into like an imac or imac pro or something like that or even the mac pro um, in the future so there's always going to be new chips coming out so if you're really interested in a desktop i might wait but in terms of laptops i don't think that there is a has ever been a better time to buy a new Apple laptop as there is right now with these 14 and 16 inch computers. I think that they're absolutely awesome. And I think that they're well worth the investment, even though they're very expensive. All right, there you go. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, I, we've been getting tons of questions about this. So I just wanted to put this out there as a resource to exist forever. So this is not necessarily what we normally talk about on this channel, but it, again, I think computers are really important to us as photographers, and there's not a lot of education around it, so here you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Tyler. This is Caitlin's YouTube channel. Please come back next week. We've got one more video for the year, and I'm proud to announce that we have posted a video every single Thursday for this entire year. We have not skipped a week, and next week is going to be the last video of the year. Caitlin's going to be talking about her five things uh, that she learned in 2021. So please come back for that. A little round of applause for us for not missing any uploads. I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to make that happen. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the channel this year. I know I've enjoyed making it for you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Please like and subscribe, all those things down below. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, I almost forgot. Did anybody notice my homage to Boca Boy over here? Oh, I love Boca Boy so much, I miss him. RIP Boca Boy. He's not actually dead. He's living at Michael's parents' house, but I just miss miss his fame. The long lost child star. Anyway, okay, thanks. Bye.